Hello, everyone. Thank you for joining uh, joining us with another Pilates India experience sharing session. This session is going to be on women who has transitioned career from non-tech to tech fields. And we have Nayanika Baliga with us, who would be speaking from who would be speaking on her journey, how she transi transitioned from finance to front end. Over to you, Nayanika. Okay. Hey, everyone. Um, I'm Nanika, and I'm going to be talking about my journey uh, from finance to front end. And this is a look into my timeline of uh, the major milestones that um, that really impacted, you know, my journey as a whole. So um, without like, let's just start the presentation. Um, so this is this is a, a quote that really uh, speaks to me because um, I think it's it's actually it's written by uh, grace hopper and this is she's someone i respect and admire a lot and it's my hope that you know i get to accomplish even half as much as uh, she has in her lifetime because she really did so much for women and i wanted to, i want to be able to create um, you know that kind of change too someday so uh, the quote goes like the most damaging phrase in the language is it's is it's always been done that way the reason this quote uh, speaks to me is because no part of uh, my journey has been conventional. It was a series of what ifs that led to where I am today. And I know it's not a lot, but a year back, if you had told me I, I'd be here, I would never have believed it. So I guess it's about like, you know, comparing your past self with your present to see how, you know, how much you're, you were able to grow in, you know, maybe in a span of a year or so. So let's begin with the presentation. Um, uh, so this is, uh, so it started, it all began with school and um, uh, yeah, so I was always interested in technology, but I'll be very honest with you while I wanted to pursue something in this field, I honestly didn't know what I could do with it. We didn't have any kind of orientation, you know, where we were told about the importance of technology. I guess I should have been more resourceful and proactive. And that's probably, you know, my biggest regret because I could have done something. I could have taken initiative and, you know, done something about it. But at that time, I guess things were and how they are now. The current generation is a lot more aware and proactive because technology is now an extension, you know, of ourselves. So anyway, come back, come back to school, we had the option uh, between computer science and commerce, and this was in ninth grade. So this, this was like an elective that we could choose um, for ninth and 10th. So although it wasn't really a free will choice, since I remember vividly having a test, a single math problem that would be this like that would be the single deciding factor to get into computer science and the rest that didn't solve the math problem were automatically put into commerce now i'm not downplaying the importance of commerce just the just that things were very black and white where the teachers were telling the rest of us that if we weren't good at math that computer science was an automatic no-no in terms of you know a successful career choice so anyway, moving on, I continued with commerce, but I knew this wasn't something I would be interested in, in the long term. I thought to explore my options and, re and I started reading extensively about the different in industries I could be interested in. And that's when I stumbled upon the world of startups and how technology was dis disrupting the world as we know it. So if you really look at it, startups was something that finally tipped the scale in favor of technology. So uh, that's when I started uh, that I decided to give I was going to, you know, give technology a try. So then I started to chalk out what I want to get into. And the first language that I thought would align with my interest was Python, uh, since being a relatively easy language, I'd say, to pick up due to, due to the syntax. And it's also one of the main building blocks for a promising career with machine learning. I took a course on EDX. It was by MIT, a very a rigorous one where there were tests and assignment submissions. And I was and I was also currently balancing my 11th grade and preparing for my um, AS and A level exams. So it was hard, no doubt, since um, it was something completely new for me, but challenging nevertheless. And um, so these ASNA level exams are actually a UK version of the US 
um, IB curriculum. It's a little, I guess it's a little harder than ISC. I'm not so sure how many of you are aware, but anyway, it's, it's, a, it's a really nice curriculum. So I started practicing Python. It was more on and off since, you know, I had to dedicate most of my efforts to high school. But after graduating, I started attending meetups of my interests. That is when my interest for machine learning actually really grew. And I started reading up more about uh, computer vision and NLP. Those were my uh, two areas of interests. Um, I slowly grew my network in the tech industry by meeting many professionals who were either into AI or ML. And soon, uh, one of the organizers of one of those many meetups that I attended <clears throat> even helped me come up with a study plan a two-year dedicated plan with everything that I had to cover. It was great. Um, so then I graduated from high school and I soon found myself, um, uh, yeah, before I begin with that, yeah. So uh, soon I found myself currently at university pursuing a bachelor's in business administration. And on the first day of orientation, the vice chancellor of my university addressed the class of 2016 about how technology is going to grow even further, making it an indispensable skill to know. So um, I decided to also try HTML and CSS and realized that uh, that brought me a lot more joy because it leaned more towards, you know, art and creativity. And that's something that I, I always, you know, I, I love like a lot. So that's when I started, you know, questioning myself. Um, I was it was a habit that I took pride in because uh, very often uh, we find ourselves in, in a place where we never in, intended to be. So I, I, I find that if you ask yourself the hard questions now, you are more clear about your choices that will end up altering your future later. So um, right after that, it was um, I started it was my first month of university and I took up an internship in uh, digital marketing at a Nordics uh, based startup awards company called uh, Global Startup Awards. And I was um, I was looking after the whole uh, SARC region. Um, I was helping them with understanding the startup uh, ecosystem in the SARC region, exploring communities and talking to people from different countries. And that's when I realized that the sheer importance of communities as a whole and how it was helping the startup ecosystem flourish. And this is when I started to explore like many different communities that I soon realized were able were you know were like available to me. And uh, then I was soon associated with communities uh, like Facebook, Google, and Startup Weekend, among others. Um, but the first um, ever uh, event I attended was by uh, Google Women Tech Makers in March 2017. And that event uh, changed my life forever. I, I met some of the people who have helped me a ton and become like family. Moreover, this community accepted me when I wasn't from the tech background and gave me the drive I needed to make it in this field and follow my passion. So um, soon after that, it was time for uh, GDD. Uh, this is Google, Google Developer Days. It's an annual event that is hosted all over the world. And luckily that year, it was in Bangalore. Uh, being a Women Tech Maker member gave us entry into the reception, which was just the day before uh, the event, where, where we could talk to a lot of people who were from Udacity and many Udacity certified professionals and mentors. Um, there were also many other women in tech, which was actually the, the best part, because I think I un that's when I understood, you know, how much importance uh, Google gives towards diversity, inclusion and re representing women in the best way possible. So it was a friend at GDD that I met at GDD who told me about a Google Challenge uh, scholarship for front end and Android. He asked me to apply and so I did. I didn't give it much thought since I was pretty sure I wouldn't get it. But um, so I was actually pretty shocked when I found out I was selected for the first uh, phase. I was one of the 2000 people uh, out of 30,000 applicants. Um, the first phase covered HTML, CSS and JavaScript. Uh, this was a span of three months, um, and I contributed to the community a lot in terms of helping other, uh, others solve their bugs, explain a concept, help out with projects. So the, the whole collaborative learning atmosphere was the best, was the best pass, part because when you start out in the self-taught journey, I've realized it can be a very daunting experience. So having support is a huge thing. And I learned a ton from the mentors and other students. It was pretty hectic because um, I was balancing a finance internship while also uh, managing the course. Um, 
I was then uh, selected for the second phase of um, you know of the of the course, and I actually it was it was a it was a it actually coincided with my third year of college, uh, the most hectic year. But I loved the challenge, so I took it up. Um, six months went by in a jiff. Before I knew it, it was December, and uh, and I had successfully graduated from the course, a proud nano degree holder. Uh, the first few months went uh, went in college exams. I mean, the next few months went in college and exams and my research project. I did my research project with uh, blockchain and um, a Bitcoin. So it was it was very I think uh, um, it leaned a lot into technology again, even my research project, which was actually really nice. Um, yes. And yes, I graduated and even got placed, although uh, I did quit in a month because I realized finance wasn't my true calling. And um, I decided to take the plunge and pursue something I was actually passionate about. And I knew that looking back, um, pursuing technology was something I would, would would have a lot of regret if I didn't take it up immediately. So I started preparing. I took up like you know a few courses on Udemy. That was mainly around JavaScript because I think it was a gap before you know I decided to actually pursue technology again, and I'd forgotten a lot of it. So I I, I think you know that's why I needed to like go get back to it and study and uh, you know really understand what I was getting myself into now. Uh, so the first ever, um, uh, it was my first ever Deaf Fest, and um, this was in last year, I think in September. Uh, I helped out with social media marketing, Google Cloud, Bangalore Group. Apart from that, I was also the host for the Deaf Fest talk show. A completely new experience for me. I got the chance to um, interview uh, some of the people who I look up to a lot, like uh, Karthik from Google, Laksha from Google and WTM, and Varun Agni, the co founder of Bounds, and um, um, uh, Arvind from uh, Elastic. So it was great because I actually uh, did the whole thing in one take, which was very surprising to me because I really didn't expect myself to you know, nail it in one go. Um, right after that, it was time for me to attend Five Way Summit. So actually, before Deaf Fest, like a month before Deaf, Deaf Fest, in fact, I had applied for the travel grant, and again, no hopes of even getting in. Uh, but I thought to myself that you know, if I had to get in, I'd get in. Otherwise, you know, it's fine, whatever. But I was like actually really shocked when I received the travel grant. I was one of the 120 women in the world who were selected for the travel grant. And I was completely ecstatic. Um, the experience was absolutely surreal. I got to learn a ton and meet so many new people. It was a great experience because of the amount of people I got to meet from all over the world, which gave me exposure and broadened my horizons in terms of how I look at technology as an industry. So after returning, um, I wrote a blog post um, and it was actually picked up by uh, WTM, uh, which is uh, great. And then also, more importantly, Laksha contacted me and asked me to make a video of Monday Motivation. Uh, this was essentially for women in tech and to help you know inspire people as well as it gave me a lot of visibility and in the community i guess when you have like i think it's really important for everyone out there to to you know have the chance to gain that kind of visibility and especially when you're starting out in a self taught journey because a lot of times like um, you know you you only have yourself to depend on and i think that's what you know that's what makes a difference so um, I, I'd say like, you know, go for it and get really active in the community. It really helps down the line. Uh, then it was more uh, preparation for uh, my React JS um, because I was getting into React now properly. I also got my first uh, freelance project. It was a month, uh, month long project where I had to create an e-commerce website and a web app. It was an amazing experience to actually have the chance to apply what I'd learned, you know, in the real world. Uh, soon after that, I started my internship hunting because uh, I knew I needed a little more experience be before I could actually start a full time job. I was ready and in, like I was ready and, ex and extremely eager to learn everything I could get my hands on. So and so I did. 
uh, the company culture at Anstack was great with uh, because we had like a very um, nice set of employees and some of whom are still my great friends and they helped me a lot um, in terms of you know understanding the differences and and that's when I actually also uh, relearned a lot of things which I thought I knew uh, because you know things are so different in the workplace and and when you when you're at home sitting and working in a project it's a totally different uh, experience because when you're there there are so many deadlines there are you know you have to understand things you know on the go you have to learn stuff learn so many languages on the go so i think it was a very different experience so i would urge everyone to you know jump before before you even think you're ready because you know you can you can always build your wings along you know build your wings along the way down so i think for me it's and for everyone out there if you if you if you don't think you're ready now and you you may be waiting for the right time that probably will never happen so just jump just jump and trust yourself that you will do it and you will do well and that's all i can say because see if you if you trust if you have if you believe in yourself i think there is it you're already halfway there to you know where you want to be so um in in addition to that i also started uh, contributing to open source projects uh, where i got the experience uh, you know the whole where i got to experience the tech community from a whole different paradigm which was like incredible and then this was uh, i started contributing in i think in like um i think may or april and um in june i was actually job hunting uh, it took me 3 months to understand how the tech recruiting um, you know paradigm works um i had to learn uh, dsa a uh, super fast and so i got um, guidance from a few close friends and some twitter strangers that turned into family in no time um i applied to 100 plus companies got shortlisted by 20 companies and in the end had two offers of which i picked the company based on uh, the learning opportunities and the chance to work in a great enterprise application so that's roku um and i'm also learning a new framework which is angular which is just like the best part uh, of everything because i think angular is even though it's i think it has a smaller community in terms of uh, when you compare it to react but it's a great uh, you know framework to learn in terms of you know like getting into the whole enterprise application uh, part so uh, yeah so this is my journey so far um, i have a lot more to go i know but my next goals are to master dsa and um, i'm also participating in my first ever hacktober fest and i also uh, plan on getting back to illustrating I had briefly stopped doing it in May, and now I would love to get back to it now. Also, I haven't given up on on ML as a career. <laughs> it's something I want to do now, and I know it's so different. And you know, when compared to front end, I feel like I'm ready to actually take it up now because I think ML opens a lot more doors. And you know, there's so much you can do with machine learning and AI and that's actually you know where i want to um head in the future so i'm really excited about my journey and anyway i already have like a two year study plan ready so i might as well use it sometime and um so yeah i'd like to leave with this quote um so you have to believe that you know um that the things that the dots will connect somehow in the future because for me many times i thought that maybe what i was doing wasn't really you know connected to anything that i want to do in the future but um for me that see the thing is when you're starting out you don't know what's going to lead you know where you're going to get to in the future so you just have to uh, believe in yourself take every opportunity that that comes to you and also like find a way and also you know don't don't really uh, let yourself lose importance to a certain thing saying that it's not going to matter later because you never know how it's going to impact you because for me even though my I'm, i may not be using my business degree like directly but it's helped me a lot in terms of understanding how the client's mind works and you know how um, how things function in the business world and not just understanding things you know from the tech side of things so i have like a more broader understanding of um, of the company side of things as well as you know the whole technology side of things which which acts which actually like um it it makes me understand a whole lot more with the app development and you know what the user wants and everything because we learn a lot about uh, user behavior even in uh, even in you know in my business degree so yeah i mean that's about it and thank you so much for joining me today it really meant a lot and for all of you out there i think just uh if you if you have a dream just go for it don't don't 
uh, put it off for later because it's never going to happen. Just do it, go for it, and you will do well. And if you need any kind of help, and if you're someone who's getting to, into the tech industry right now, I'd be happy to help you in any way I can. Because I think if, if it weren't for my community and the friends that I made, I would have probably not come even half, covered even half as much as I would have. So I'm glad, and um, thank you so much. Thank you, Nainika, for this amazing session. It was really inspiring. Uh, Thank you. To all, to all those who are attending, if you have any questions, please put it on the chat. Uh, Nanika, we also do have a backend uh, Zulip channel for uh, two okay. Zulip channels for real time streaming. Okay. So yeah, if you uh, if you would like to join, you can also hang around there. People can ask in questions and uh, get. Okay. Great. Yeah. Great. Great. Yeah, I'll do that. Yeah. Okay. Uh, there's a question from Jagannath. Did math matter later? Since you mentioned you were in <laughs> with it. Yeah, uh, no, actually, it did not matter um, as much as I thought it would, because I think uh, computer science is more inclined towards, you know, your logic and problem solving rather than just having, you know, the math, pro like the math skills. So, but I think it is a good uh, skill to have, but you don't have to be like an absolute pro at it, like, you know, from what our school was like telling us to be because I was from a very um, academic oriented school. So we didn't really have this option where, you know, where we could um, like we didn't have this free hand, I'd say, you know, because I think in school now in schools nowadays, that's there. Like you get to pursue something that you really want to. But uh, that at that time, it was more of, a, you know, I guess just putting people into certain compartments, you know, like, and that's not cool at all, because there's so much more that uh, people can do. And if you just give them a chance and probably help them understand, you know, what could, uh, what could happen if you take this career option, it, it could really make or break someone's career. So I think that's, I think that's a, there are a lot of flaws in the Indian, Indian education system, but I think with the new uh, policies, I think they're trying to solve a couple of them. And I hope it's actually a success because it will end up changing, you know, a lot more um, people's lives in the future. Um, so how much support did you get from family? And, and I hope I uh, answered your question, Jagannath. Okay. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Great. And how much support did you get from family in making such career switches? Um, I have a great family, even though uh, my mom is like, uh, you know, you might not, uh, uh, you know, be able to make it because of, you know, how difficult it is to actually get into this, uh, into this whole field. But uh, they never stopped supporting me, even when I quit my job, which is probably the most uh, scariest part, because uh, I think the, the week that I quit my job, I was so scared. I had no idea what was going to happen, if I was even going to be able to, you know, uh, probably like even get a job in tech. And it's really hard because it's not like, um, you know, an industry where there isn't, uh, you know, already enough people. and. And it's, you know, and, and there's so many talented people, like so many people who have like, you know, a four year degree and who have done so much in their in their four years, like, you know, related to technology. And I just what I just have like a nano degree. But uh, I think the thing is, the important fact is that you just have to um, believe and you have to make your family believe that, you know, you will do it. That's that's the only thing, because it's it all depends on your hard work and how much you put into, you know, what you really like. And it's it's the dream at the end of the day and how much you want to do it, because it, it doesn't matter whether your family supports you or not. If you want it, then you should go for it. Definitely. Like you can't you can't just be like, you know, I have no support. I'm not going to do this. But because, you know, at the end of the day, you are the one who's going to regret it later. So just if you have a dream, if you want to go for something, just go right ahead. Don't don't really, you know, wait for anyone to, you know, say that you're not that you're not capable enough or you're not good enough. Although my family was very sweet. But, you know, I'm just saying in general, don't let anyone. And if you need any kind of support in any way, I'm here. I'm always here on Twitter. I'm available. You can DM me whenever. 
so the ne next, and I hope I answered your question, Prashant. Um, yeah, next question is uh, by Saurabh, scope of financial modeling and role of Python, and that if you can brief, brief a bit, that helps. Okay, um, so actually uh, in school, we had a semester where we had to take up business analytics. Uh, and that's when I picked up R. So uh, we had a lot of um, experience and exposure in terms of um, uh, how to, you know, connect the two. Because um, I think Python and um, um, Python is some. I think maybe a little similar to R, right? I mean, I'm not really sure between the, you know, the the similarities, but it does help a lot in financial modeling. But for financial modeling, we also have another. Um, a software called eViews. It's it's basically for uh, it's basically for finance. So uh, you could you could also do a lot of your financial financial modeling there, like you know having predictive analytics and um, and uh, trying to um, you know um, get like different kinds of. I'm oh, actually I don't remember. Wait, there was a chi. Uh, what was that thing called? Uh, chi chi square. I don't remember the uh, the financial modeling test exactly, but I had like a whole semester with it. But yeah, yeah, exactly. So <laughs> that was yeah, that was great. But uh, yeah, so we use this eView software. So if you want to know more about it, I I'd love to help you. It was it actually helped a lot uh, for me. But yeah, R uh, I also learned R, which is uh, which was great because I I understood you know how um, the the tech world works in terms of you know the data analytics side also, and not just the front end side. But um, yeah, I think I hope I answered your question. I, let's see. Uh, OK, great. Yeah, and if you need any help, I can help you with uh, with eViews because I did my whole research project on that. So we had like an end, like a really uh, long sessions where you know we had to cover how exactly the software works. So that's good. So I can help you if you need any help. So it was a mixture of Excel and um, yeah, yeah. I'd, I'd love to help you with that. Yeah, great. So if any of you have um, other questions, I would uh, love to answer them. I guess we're done then. Are we done? Uh, yeah. And close the session. And I think people will mostly reach out to you. <laughs> yeah. Twitter. Yeah. Yeah. If, yeah. I I hope you got my uh, social media. I think it's right there, right below the thank yeah. you. So yeah. yeah, just please connect. Yeah. Okay. Great. Thank you so much, Sukanya, for all the help, and thank you so much, guys, for attending my talk. It really means a lot, and I hope uh, you enjoyed it and it was informative. And I hope you go after you know your passion and your dreams, and you and you don't really you know let anyone else tell you that you know you're not capable of doing something. So. Right. The last part is very yeah. important. The last part yeah. is very important. Exactly. Yeah. And at the end, you have to have that dedication. You know, if you if you exactly. if you lack that dedication, then you're just screwed. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> Discipline is the core of. I mean, is the fundamental of anything. And, and exactly. Right. Dedication. Thank you yeah. all for joining, and uh, thank you, uh, Nainika, for this uh, inspiring session once again. And uh, thank you so much. It 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 was really an example for. Uh, for many who wants to make a big breakthrough in the tech industry and also who is trying probably who is also a college student and trying to uh, you know uh, get back into the industry correct yeah yeah, I mean, I I know a lot of college students who uh, who are in CS, but now they're into uh, UI/UX design. Mm -hmm. So, and that uh, actually that didn't really help them. Their whole four-year degree didn't help them because they completely broke out of it, and they were like, "No, let's just you know take up designing and actually take it as a career." And they did it all on their own. Like even from even in my case, in fact, um, for the whole job hunting uh, scenario, I. I didn't depend on any of my connections. I was on LinkedIn like 24 seven and guys, LinkedIn is the most important thing out there. Like it's the most important social media tool because you, you get so much from it. Like you meet, you get to meet so many people. And if you network the right way, you will end up getting a really good job. Like I, I hadn't really, I mean, I, I underestimated the importance of LinkedIn before, uh, you know, I started this whole job hunting, uh, Part, but it's actually great. So just network as much as possible. And um, yeah, if you need any help again, I'm here. I'm always here. So thank you so much. <laughs> it's great to know. Uh, 
Uh, thank you all for joining. Thank you, Nanika. Uh, we'll be closing the session. We are on the top yeah. of the hour. Uh, yeah. All right. Okay. Thank you. Bye. Bye.